Tell Me About It is brought to you by Extreme Health Club. Welcome to Tell Me About It. I'm James Brown. I am not here with Trevent Hayes. He has a busy day in front of him. Uh, all these uh, other jobs that he has to go along with everything else that he does. Uh, so we'll miss him. I really wanted to ask him about that uh, Bell County, Hart County game because I believe he went to the game to watch it. And uh, that was the semifinals of the state in Class 3A football. Uh, and But I'll talk about that in a little while. You can catch this show every Thursday at 6 p.m. on the Glasgow EPB Channel 6, the local channel on the Glasgow EPB YouTube, YouTube channel, one of those words, and uh, 104thescore.com, kysports.tv. Uh, so we're going to mostly talk about basketball because the basketball season tipped off on Tuesday night for all of our local teams. The season, I think, could have officially started on Monday or maybe even Sunday evening, as a matter of fact. But most a lot of folks played Monday, not so many locally, but most of everybody played on Tuesday night. So we'll talk a little bit about those games that, uh, that occurred on Tuesday night, talk about some upcoming games that are going to be played Friday and you know early next week prior to the next of this show. And, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about what we learned from the coaches as we interviewed them and what their expectations are for their teams. Uh, let's start on the boys' side of things. Um, and first of all, Barron County did not play on Tuesday night, the Trojans. They were supposed to play uh, Campbellsville initially. It was a girl-boy doubleheader, but Campbellsville was still in the football playoffs on last Friday. And, uh, you know, so they asked if they could move the game uh, to Thursday if they lost. And then I think it was December 11th that they won. They lost. So right now the Trojans are gearing up to play the uh, Tigers over in Campbellsville. The varsity game, I think, tips at 6.30. So, you know, it takes an hour to get there. If you leave right now, you can get there by halftime. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the boys' side. So that, that game's tonight for Barron County. Their next game, uh, will, they'll turn around on Friday uh, and play at Elizabethtown. So two road games open their season. And uh, then next Tuesday, they will host Caverna. Uh, that both the E-Town games and the Governor games are girl-boy doubleheaders with the uh, tip times at 6 o'clock Central Time. I know Elizabeth Town's on fast time, but, you know, I'm going to stick with Central Time because that's where we're sitting right now. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, one of the things that Coach Warren Cunningham talked about with the Trojans was uh, – replacing some of especially the key two key players uh big guys in terms of eli brooks and aiden miller you know the rebounding that they have to be replaced and those were their top two scores and then carson beckham was another senior who's kind of a three-point specialist um and that kind of thing uh so one of the things though that did work out for the trojans last year is they started two sophomore guards in uh tate spillman and bray Bewley, both of whom also played football and so you know, one of the best things that can happen in high school basketball is ha to have returning guards with experience, especially if they can play and those two guys can. And they've kind of found some ways to uh, mix in some other folks. Um, Mason Bunch would come in last year. He's a pretty long guy, but mainly he shot threes. He's worked on his game inside and out in the offseason. Graham Hall is going to be leaned on quite a bit, probably inside, especially on the defensive side and rebounding. And then um, you've got uh, Will Compton, who uh, missed, I think, parts of seasons, uh, maybe last season, especially due to injuries. So he's not really had a whole bunch of varsity experience, but he's not. He's a pretty long guy as well and, and a shooter as well. So it's going to be a different look for the Trojans this year when you finally get to see them play at Campbellsville. Because it's, it's been a very... Um, team dominated by inside presence. I mean, you go back, or at least size-wise and athleticism inside. Uh, if you go back the last four or five years, or guys who would drive and score, that kind of thing. This is more of a, maybe a spread them out and shoot threes kind of team, which is, I don't think Warren's really had one of those while he's been coaching at Barron County. So it's a, it's a different 
probably a different look, probably a moving a little bit faster than they have just because you're not you're having to get it spread out that scoring quite a bit. And you've got a couple of guards who both can drive and shoot pretty well. So it'll be interesting to see how they do uh, with Campbellsville and Elizabethtown. Probably two very different games. And then, of course, next week with Caverna. Um, talking about the Colonels, they opened the season with uh, an 83-34 win at Fort Knox on Tuesday. Jalen Crane had 34 points. He had five threes in the game. Uh, you know, we didn't get to see Coach Barker here on Tell Me About It, at least not yet, uh, to talk about the fact that they were not rated in the top 10 in the preseason poll in the fifth region, and Jalen Crane wasn't one of the top 10 players in the fifth region. Now, the fifth region is more balanced than the fourth. If you got probably seven or eight, I mean, I say seven or eight, you might have 12 teams that are actually pretty good in the fifth region. None of them a Bowling Green or a Warren Central good year in and year out, but good overall. And so uh, I think that's that's may have an impact on why nobody – the, none of the coaches in, in the fifth region voted uh, Cavern in the top 10 or Jalen Crane as a top 10 player. But I think he probably is. And I think they probably are too when you get right down to it. Uh, that was an impressive win. Fort Knox is, is a down program, so you know you don't get a whole lot of measurement from it. But Friday night when the Colonels host John Harden, we'll know a lot more about him because John Harden is traditionally one of the stronger programs in the fifth region. I don't think they've been quite as good the last couple of years, but they're always uh, a good program. So that'll be a different matchup. And then, of course, like I said, they'll be playing over at Barron County uh, next Tuesday uh, at 7.30 p.m. The John Harden game is at 7 p.m. on Friday, Central Time. And so, uh, so we'll get to see a good bit more about what the Colonels um, – are capable of their next two games. Like I said, the Fort Knox games kind of, uh, they should win the game they, the way they did if they're a good team. So, you know, you, that's what you're looking for when it's a lopsided matchup. Does a team win the way you think they should? And I think the Colonels did do that at Fort Knox. And then Glasgow opened open their season uh, Tuesday against Logan County in the 2A tournament. They won that game, so they move on. I think they'll play Warren East at some point in time in the next round of the 2A tournament. Uh, this is the regional part of it, and, you know, I, I, I've not paid a whole lot of attention to it. I think this is the second time Glasgow's been in this. They were in it when it first started for, like, a season, and then they dropped back and were playing in the Class 1A uh, tournaments and that kind of stuff, so they're back in the 2A tournaments. And... They beat Logan County 63-36. Uh, I think John Carter Walbert and um, Jarek Martin both had solid games offensively. Uh, defensively, they were really getting after it. Uh, Jeremiah Driver inside, and then um, Zach Poor, those guys. Maybe um, Jalen Bradley came off the bench, had a pretty good game. Quinn Nunley looked pretty good. So decisive win there against Logan County. Logan County was down last year. I think they maybe only won one or two games last year. Maybe they won six, but not many. Uh, but Glasgow went 10 and 18. So, I mean, it's it's a good start for the Scotties. They've been looking for this turnaround. And uh, they next, they will host uh, Greenwood on Friday at 7.30. And uh, that'll be an interesting matchup. Greenwood took one on the chin to start the season. They lost to Russell County 67-54. So, We'll see what all they have coming there. And there, I just wanted to mention a couple of notable games that stood out to me. Warren Central opened the season with a loss at, at Beth Haven 59-47. And Warren East beat Metcalf County 82-54. So that was a pretty interesting win for Warren East. All right, this is Tell Me About It here on Glasgow EPB Channel 6 Local Channel. We'll be right back. <laughs> Extreme Fitness has doubled in size. Now with over 8,000 square feet of co-ed weights and an upgraded 90 degree sailing therapy pool. The Extreme Fitness Campus also holds the exclusive Extreme Fitness for Women Complex and Extreme Blend Smoothie Bar. You have to experience the variety of classes to realize the impact they have on their clients. Personal training is with the best in the business and is available and tailored to fit individuals. So start your journey today at Extreme Fitness and Health Club.
Welcome back to Tell Me About It. I'm James Brown here on Glasgow EPB Channel 6, the local channel. Uh, you can catch this show every Thursday at 6 p.m. live. You can catch it on the Glasgow EPB YouTube, YouTube channel. Uh, I don't know, like and subscribe to all that stuff. <laughs> Give it a thumbs up. Whatever you're supposed to do, I don't know. You know, I don't really do that stuff. Uh, you can also catch this show on 104thescore.com and kysports.tv. Spent the first segment talking about the boys' basketball opening to the season. Uh, the girls also locally all opened on Tuesday night. The, the Barron County Trojanettes did get their game in. They went over and played at Campbellsville, and it was off to a sluggish start. I went over there and shot photos and, and took notes and that kind of jazz. They got off to a little bit of a sluggish start offensively. They were down 9-2, to two, and, you know, I could tell early maybe the – even though they've practiced and they've had months without Katie Murphy, it was the first live-action game that really counted um, with her out due to injury. And I could tell there was a bit of an impact there in terms of probably uh, early defense, in terms of pressure defense and that kind of thing, and probably just running the offense in general. I mean, you can't take a four-year starter out of the lineup and, and expect it that first live action to, to run seamlessly. I'm sure Coach Piper Lindsey was like, look, we've been working on this. You guys have got to do better than this. But they were down 9-2 to two early, gave up a couple of threes, and then – um, it's kind of like they, they got it worked out. They figured out exactly what they were trying to do defensively. And they really took over the game after that. They went on a 13-2 uh, to two run to finish out the first quarter, led 15-11 to 11 after one. The second quarter was, you know, they were, they were in control throughout the second quarter. They had a long stretch where they just did not score in the second quarter. And that kind of, that allowed basically Campbellsville to hold hang around in the second quarter. They blew it up in the third quarter. Um, they outscored Campbellsville, I think it was 24 to eight, I think is what it was in the second, in the third quarter. You know, they really got to clicking, moving the ball, hitting people in the lane with easy layups, uh, forcing turnovers. Um, the pressure really ratcheted up. And, you know, it was, that generated all a lot of their offense. They didn't have, they didn't, they didn't wind up running a whole bunch of half-court sets against uh, Campbellsville just because Campbellsville um, would turn the ball over and kind of give them easy baskets. But when they did, you know, they found Taylor Strange inside. I think she finished with uh, 14, I think is what it was. And Abby Varney had 21 to lead the Trojanettes. And I would say she had a quiet 21 because there was no stretch during the game where you were like, oh, she just caught fire. She just was steady throughout. Like I said, they won the game 63-38 in the end. Uh, and, you know, that was uh, probably a good game to start with. Now, Friday night, they will uh, play at Elizabethtown, 6, 6 p.m. Central Time. That's going to be a different animal for them. I don't, Elizabethtown's not the Elizabethtown of, say, five years ago when they were the class of the fifth region. Bethlehem is that team now. Uh, but they're always good. They always have good players, and it'll be it'll be a different matchup for the Trojanettes. It'll be a good second game for them to see where they are, I do believe. And then, of course, next week, next Tuesday, Barron hosts Caverna. Uh, the Caverna girls open the season with a win at Fort Knox, um, 48-35. I'll be honest with you, I didn't know what to expect from them. They have a new head coach, and they're two Top players from last year graduated, um, especially, I mean, Tavi Gonzalez and Kayliana Richardson uh, were both six feet tall or taller, so they don't have anybody that size on the team now. And so it's a much more guard-oriented team. I think they have some pretty good young guards, uh, but, you, you know, you change coaches, you lose the players that kind of dominated possessions last year, and you don't know what you're going to get. And so I, I was pretty impressed by their win at Fort Knox. And now... When they play um, at Barron next Tuesday, that'll be different for them. And then, of course, they host John, John Harden also on Friday night. Uh, that game starts at 5.30 p.m. at Caverna. And John Harden is uh, a pretty scrappy team a lot of times. I don't know how good they are this year. They, they've, they were pretty good last year, I believe. And so that'll be a different uh, matchup for them. John Harden will be probably more athletic and 
you know, they'll have some size. It'll pose some challenges Caverna probably did not face against Fort Knox. So good, good second game for the Lady Colonels. Um, and like I said, the Trojanettes got off to a good start. Glasgow lost a heartbreaker in overtime to Logan County, 41-38. They were up late in that game. I think Logan hit a three, maybe with five seconds, eight seconds, something like that left to tie the game and then send it overtime. Uh, that three tied at 32 all. Only three pointer that Logan County made in regulation. So, you know, it's like just one of those things that uh, the Lady Scotties did everything they were supposed to, forced Logan County to take the shot they wanted Logan to take because they hadn't hit one and it goes in, you know, happens sometimes. <laughs> And so the Lady Scotties ended up losing that game in overtime. That was also in that class two a thing of a jig. Uh, so their next game, the Lady Scotties' next game is against Greenwood on Friday. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Greenwood opened the season with a loss, I believe, at Owensboro is what it was. It was pretty lopsided, as I recall. That's off the top of my head. I, I looked it up. Forgot to write it down. So anyway, it'll be an interesting matchup for the Lady Scotties. You know, of course, uh, Leah Trin is back for the Lady Gators. She's going to be a tough matchup. Um, they will probably also have a size advantage. I think they have a big girl who um, came off the bench maybe last year, but she should be a starter this year. The Lady Scotties did not shoot the ball particularly well in the loss to Logan County, which is a little bit surprising because they do have shooters. Uh, and, you know, maybe that was just that first game situation. They will, they will definitely have to find a way to shoot the ball better from outside in order to, to be more successful in their next games. Their defense was good. They played, they played defense really well, but they've got to shoot the ball better. And, uh, you know, that's kind of the situation we have right now. In some other games that I thought were kind of interesting around the area, Edmondson County beat Allen County 57-55. Now, if not on this show, but on the Brown Sports Bag, I, I kind of thought Allen County Scottsville was going to be one of the teams to look out for this year because of the returning players they had. Now, Edmondson plays in the third region, not in the fourth, but I really didn't expect I, – I really expected Allen to win that game. And then Franklin Simpson beat Monroe County 61-27. Uh, maybe the transfer from Russellville – does have an impact. I mean, she's a good player. And then uh, Warren East, uh, this is, to me was also an upset. Warren East beat Metcalf County 64-58. Metcalf, uh, I think, was ranked third in the preseason polls coming in uh, for for the fourth region. Warren East wasn't even listed, as I recall. And uh, Metcalf pretty much has everyone back from last year except for maybe a guard, or I think a guard. And so that was a shocking loss for Metcalf to me, uh, I really thought they were going to be, again, like Allen County, uh, a team to watch out for this year in the fourth region. Shows you what I know, which is, I guess, nothing. But we'll see what happens as the season goes along. All right, this is Tell Me About It here on Glasgow EPB Channel 6, the local channel. We'll be right back. <laughs> Extreme Fitness has doubled in size. Now with over 8,000 square feet of co-ed weights and an upgraded 90 degree sailing therapy pool. The Extreme Fitness Campus also holds the exclusive Extreme Fitness for Women Complex and Extreme Blend Smoothie Bar. You have to experience the variety of classes to realize the impact they have on their clients. Personal training is with the best in the business and is available and tailored to fit individuals. So start your journey today at Extreme Fitness and Health Club. Welcome back to Tell Me About It here on Glasgow EPB Channel 6, the local channel. You can catch the show live every Thursday at 6 p.m. In this final segment here, we're going to give a little recap of the state football semifinals. I might discuss the fact that um, the football playoffs in Kentucky are pretty boring, but we'll get to that perhaps. Let's start with this. Uh, the number one running back in the state of Kentucky, his name is Daniel Thomas. He plays at Bell County. Apparently, prior to this year, he was a lineman. At least, 
he has the number four, or I think is what he wears. Uh, and on the Bell County roster, he's listed as OL slash DL. All right. I'm guessing maybe everybody should just convert their linemen to running backs and then make life different. Anyway, he's broke the record in the state of Kentucky for rushing yards in a single season and I think touchdowns. And against previously unbeaten Hart County on Friday night, he ran for 235 yards and four touchdowns. And everybody I talked to who went to the game, I didn't, uh, said uh, he was for real. Like he hit the hole hard. He was a physical runner and he was also uh, fast. So I can't imagine what he was like as a pulling guard. Anyway, so they beat Hart County 30 to 28 and Bell County gets the privilege in class 3A of going to play Christian Academy of Louisville in the state finals uh, at Kroger Field. Is that what it's called? I, I don't remember the name of the field these days. Uh, in Lexington, home of the Kentucky Wildcats. And Cal uh, beat Lexington Catholic 43 to eight. And I, I mean, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm rooting for Bell County in this, uh, but uh, Cal, they might be the fourth or fifth best team across the state, no matter size. And uh, that's going to be a tough one for them. Meanwhile, Bowling Green uh, beat up on Owensboro 38 to six, and they'll play Cooper in the 5A final uh, in Lexington. Bowling Green has just rolled, you know, they've lost, I think three games is it? Um, but they have rolled in the playoffs. They've been a pretty much unstoppable force in the playoffs. That win against Owensboro was pretty impressive, especially since Owen, Owensboro the week before had beaten South Warren, I think 53 to uh, 22 or something like that. I don't remember exactly what the score was. It was pretty decisive. And, uh, you know, so I would guess Bowling Green's favorite coming in this. They've, they've done everything well here in the playoffs. In the 1A, uh, both, well, Campbellsville lost in the 1A. They lost to Pikeville 28-21, uh, the other team in our general area that, uh, that had made it deep into the playoff state semifinals. And then Raceland beat Kentucky Country Day 42-6, so it's Raceland Pikeville in the 1A championship. Uh, the most interesting state final might, well, there's two possibilities, and I, I didn't even look at 6A because I didn't. I guess that one's kind of interesting because Bryan Station's playing in it. And it wasn't too long ago, they were a bottom feeder in 6A football. But anyway, so in the 4A, it's Company Catholic and Boyle County. They were both un they are both undefeated. And in the 4A semifinal, it was four undefeated teams playing against each other. Boyle County beat Franklin County 41 to 14. And then Covenant Catholic held off Paducah Tillman 22 to 14. And then in the 2A, it's uh, Owensboro Catholic versus Mayfield. Now that might be another interesting game, I do believe. The Boyle and Covenant Catholic game could be interesting as well. Uh, Owensboro Catholic is having, they've had some good seasons. I think I saw this is the first time they're undefeated going into the state finals. So, uh, they beat Somerset 44 to 15, and then Mayfield beat Beachwood 31 to 28. And mm, probably that one and the Hart I'd say maybe the Hart uh, Bell County games were probably the two most interesting state final games, uh, semifinal games, I mean. Uh, maybe the Bryan Station game was pretty interesting too because they ended up coming back to win it, as I recall. But anyway, the reason I said this is kind of boring at this point is if you go down this list outside of uh, Cooper, which has been in the state finals before, I think they played Bowling Green in the state finals and I was trying to look that up. I don't remember exactly. It's been quite a while, as I recall. And then um, Bell County, they were a powerhouse when Dudley Hilton was there, late 90s, early 2000s. He moved and retired, went to Taylor County, but he came back to Bell County, I don't know, it's probably been six or seven years now. And this is their second turn in the state final since he's come back. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but otherwise, I mean, you have Raceland and Pikeville in 1A, feel like they're there every year. Uh, you have Covington Catholic and Boyle County in the 4A. No matter what classification they may be in, seems like they're there every year. Uh, Owensboro Catholic had a good run late 90s through the early 2010s, uh, but then they had, you know, they were just weren't, they were getting the playoffs, but they weren't getting to the state finals. So they're back. Uh, meanwhile, Mayfield beat Beachwood. It, I think they may have played each other in the state finals last year because of the RPI situation. So, you know, you have Brian Station, like I said, in 6A is a, is a 
not make state finals very often. But it feels like every year you just see the same teams year in and year out. <clears throat> I guess that's great if you're a fan of those programs. But if you're, you know, it doesn't make it a whole lot of fun if you're rooting for somebody else to know that <laughs> it seems like no matter what you do, you don't really uh, get have a shot. I, I don't know what the deal is. I mean, obviously, tradition plays a role because these programs uh, and their coaches and their players probably have a certain motivation to maintain that success. Uh, obviously, in some cases, they attract talent from their areas to uh, join their programs. And, you know, that doesn't mean that other programs can't rise up. I'll point out Bryan Station once again, Hart County in the last couple of years. You know, Union County has been a team that's uh, been getting close the last couple of years. But I don't know. I don't know if there's anything to be done about it. I mean, what do you do? You got to beat them. You got to compete. Uh, but as a person who covers sports, you know, writing Covenant Catholic back in the state finals once again, not exciting. Mayfield playing in the step for a state championship once again. Not really exciting. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you about it. If you're a fan of one of those programs, good good on you. But if you're not a fan of one of those programs, then you know, it's kind of a I don't know, kind of a downer in my opinion. You all may feel feel differently about it. Now, I will say this: when you are covering a program that pulls off one of those upsets, now that is monumental. And then they go to the, that usually happens in the regional final, sometimes state semifinal. Then you go to the state final and you get mollywopped by the other one showing up. And I don't know that the, the RPI situation is obviously not um, allowed for more teams to get to the state final. It has made some matchups in the regional round and maybe the state, state semifinal round that may have been matchups between the actual two best teams. I guess we'll see. You know, because the question is, if Mayfield goes and beats Owensboro Catholic, especially they beat, beat them handily, then Mayfield Beachwood was really the state championship game. Uh, the 4A is a little different because you had four undefeated teams and they've all been good at some point in time. In the 1A, you know, I mean, Raceland Pikeville is probably the two best teams. In the 5A, Bowling Green looks like they're the best team. And, uh, you know, Cooper pulled an upset really to get there. And so I guess maybe that's uh, something to pay attention to. But anyway, good luck to all, the, all those teams at the state finals. Go Bowling Green. Billy Lindsay is over there collecting rings from the Purples. All right. This has been Tell Me About It here on Glasgow EPB Channel 6, the local channel. We'll be back next Thursday at 6 p.m.